Hi, my wonderful sweet fifth graders. I miss you guys so, so, so much. I'm giving you a virtual hug right now, and we are all just going to make it through this. You guys are doing great. I wanted to take a few minutes today to go over the study guide, the um, guide to practice blanks, because I noticed when some of you submitted them that you had some blanks that you just didn't get, which is okay. Um, I told you that you don't have to be perfect. And if you don't find all the answers, that's all right. So we're going to go through it today. And I want to make sure that everybody has all the right blanks and all the right words and all the blanks. And then we're just going to talk a little bit about the chapters. Um, just some things that, well, one really big important thing that I think is really important for all of us right now. So get out your study guide and follow along with me. Okay. I'm going to page seven. It also... Okay, so it's page seven. Remember when we went and, and numbered all of these at the top? If you didn't do that correctly, then you need to go and fix that. So that because the page numbers, having the right page numbers is really, really important right now. So your page seven, where all your blanks are, I'm going to start at chapter three because you had a sub for, for that one. And then chapter four and chapter five, I'm going to read through what I have for the answers. If you have something close, go ahead and leave it. But if you have something really different, I want you to fix it and change it, okay? If I go too fast, remember, you can pause this video and you can all you can watch it as many times as you need to, okay? And make sure you like it too because that'll make me feel happy, okay? All right, okay. So chapter three, number one says, Brian cannot see any lakes. All he sees are trees. That's the part where he was ready to land and all of a sudden all the lakes disappeared. Um, number two, Brian sees an L-shaped body of water to land in. Number three, when he was landing, Brian heard loud animal-like screams, and he did not know that it was from him. Number four, Brian finally lands in the water and barely makes it out to the shore before his body gives out on him. So that's chapter three. This is a really short chapter, okay? Now, chapter four. Number one. The secret is something that keeps popping into Brian's head. Excuse me. Number two. Brian was riding his 10-speed bike with his friend named Terry. They went by the Amber Mall and Brian saw his mom. Brian's mom was with a blonde-haired man in a white shirt. This is the secret. Number three, after making it to the shore, Brian falls asleep until the next day. Number four, when he wakes up, Brian has a difficult time thinking of the, pain, the plane crash as reality and not his imagination, which, you know, it was pretty spectacular. And sometimes I look around what's going on right now and I'm like, this is real happening. Okay. But it is. It's reality. All right. Number five, Brian did not hurt any of his body parts, which is probably a miracle that he survived and didn't break any bones. Number six, when the sun comes up, so do the mosquitoes and black flies. And I always thought that was kind of funny at this part where he says that on the nature shows, they never talk about the bugs. Like he didn't, he wasn't expecting the bugs to come and eat him alive and they did. All right. Number seven, the water is very calm. Number eight, Brian thought the trees were pines and spruce. Number nine, Brian saw a beaver in the water chasing all the jumping fish. Now that section was a little confusing, so you might have had to dig a little bit. And put some things together to get that. So that is chapter four. Okay. Chapter five, you were supposed to read for me the other day and finish this one. Okay. So we're going to go over that just real quick. So chapter five, number one, when Brian woke up from his nap, he realizes how thirsty he is and how stiff his body is now. Number two, Brian moves or steps from the non-murky water by balancing on a log. Number three, 
He drinks so much of the water, he immediately throws up when he gets back on shore. That was the gross part. Number four, Brian thinks that the searchers will look for him according to the pilot's flight plan and find him within a day or two. Number five, all Brian had was 62 cents, a wallet with a $20 bill, some odd pieces of paper, and his hatchet. Number six, Brian had an English teacher named Mr. Perpich who always told them to look at things with a good attitude. He also said that you are the most valuable asset you have. Number seven, Brian realizes that he has never heard complete silence before, or you could just put silence because it's just one blank. <clears throat> Number eight, all this time, Brian is craving a hamburger, malt, and fries. If you don't know what a malt is, you should probably ask your parents. It's sort of like a milkshake, but they would put malt in it and it had a different flavor. If you've ever had malted milk duds, they have like a certain taste to it. It's really good. I like chocolate malt. Maybe I'm going to have to go get one. Hmm. I wonder what drive through places have chocolate malts. Anyways, okay. All right. Delicious malt. It's like a milkshake, though, if you're confused. Okay. Number nine, Brian suddenly realizes that the pilot's right foot was on the rudder pedal, the rudder pedal, and made the entire plane shift to the right. This means the plane flew off the flight plan. This is crucial information because now Brian knows that it's going to take them longer to find him. 10, Brian knew he had to get shelter. He had to find some food and make a shelter. Oh no, he knew he had to get motivated. He had to find some food and make a shelter. <laughs> okay, number 10, let me clarify. Brian knew he had to get motivated. He had to find some food and make a shelter. Okay, so then part of your assignment today is going to be to fill in this page. Now, Page nine, Brian uses his skills of observation to take stock of his surroundings, record what Brian finds, and predict how he might be able to use them. So I don't want just a list of items. I want you to say how you think that these things might be useful to him. And you're just kind of guessing. So you're gonna put yourself in the situation of, well, if you were stranded and you had a $20 bill in your wallet, what would you do with it? Well, what good is a $20 bill? My guess would be that he probably could use it to start the fire. I mean, you're going to burn it. What else are you going to do? Or maybe keep it in case you finally get rescued. But a $20 bill is not good for much. But some of his other items are good. And don't forget to include the hatchet and all of his clothing because he's going to use that clothing if for nothing else but to protect his body from the cold and the wet, right? But you can be creative. Think of some other ideas. And um himself he's got himself and that's one of the things that i kind of wanted to highlight for you guys today because you know we're in an unusual situation and we are our best assets okay so i like the point here where on page 46 it says that brian had once had an english teacher i always like it when they mention english teachers a guy named perpich I think it's funny he doesn't even call him Mr. Perpich. He just calls him Perpich. Okay, don't call me Masson. I'm Mrs. Masson. I earned that Mrs. All right, anyways. He was always talking about thinking positive, thinking positive and staying on top of things. Now, this is good advice, and this is something that we all need right now. Think positive. Stay on top of things. Try not to fall behind on your lessons. Okay, don't get lazy. Now, if it's really hard and it takes you longer than, it, than you want it to, and you take a break and come back to it, that's fine. But don't let yourself fall behind or you'll have a hard time getting caught up. And it's, it's just not worth it, okay? But stay positive. We're going to make it through this. Everybody's going to be okay. And we're just all doing the best that we can. Um, it says here, Brian thought of him now and wondered how to stay positive and on top of this. All Perpich would say is that I have to get motivated. He's always telling kids, to get motivated. 
Stay motivated. Don't lose your motivation. Don't get lazy. Um, whatever it is that you need to do to pray, listen to fun music. Oh, I left you a link for word crimes, which is always a peppy song. It peps me up every time I hear it. Um, stay motivated. Okay. But this is good advice for Brian, because what if he didn't, what if he just laid there on the lake and wallowed in his own misery? Well, he'd probably die. He would have starved to death. Okay. So he had to get himself motivated or he wasn't going to survive. Then later on page 47, he remembers the purchase used purp Purpich used to drum that into them. You are the most valuable asset. Don't forget that. You are the best thing that you have. And that's true for all of us. You are the best thing that you have. And you are your best tool. Then at the end of chapter five, on page 51, he says, I have to get motivated, he thought, remembering purpose. Right now, I'm all I've got. I have to do something. So he's going to get motivated and he's going to start trying to survive. And now the good part starts where we get to see all the good ideas he has and all the mistakes he makes. And, and this is a fun book. I hope you guys are liking this book, even though you're reading at home. It's not really necessarily ideal. If you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to comment in the comment section on this these chapters. It would be kind of neat if we could get a little bit of discussion going in the comments. That would be a lot of fun. Um, like and, and subscribe to my videos so I can become YouTube famous. Yeah. Okay. All right. I love you, fifth grade. And I hope to see you again really soon. Until then, we're going to make it through this. Just hang in there. Bye.